Okay, I have uh, re-cabled my network and um, verified connectivity, and I've reconnected uh, with the remote desktop so I can record my session. And I want to point out, this is what was left after I ran through the wizard. If you'll notice up here, it says 192.168.1.1. RASA no longer has that IP address. So I, I regularly see students that still have this window up, and they're doing things. They're doing things because this is just a Java program that runs and it's not until you you do something and hit apply changes that it try to connect so if you're trying to do something and things aren't working correctly make sure you're connected to the right thing so what we need to do is kill this stupid thing kill this stupid thing are you sure you want to exit yes I want to exit there we go and then we want to reopen it. So we need to go find it again and reopen it. And now we need to put the IP address that we put onto this device. Which I believe I called it 253. I didn't add a username, but I did add a password of class. So make sure you put the proper, proper um, credentials in there. Hit continue, and now it's going to load, allow access. So now it's going to load, and, and we are going to have our config from our uh, newly configured ASA. So if we go look at our device, we want to go look at the firewall settings. And if we look at the firewall, okay, so I ran into some technical difficulties. I'm not sure at what point I'm going to cut and splice these videos together. So you probably just got a little weird jump in time and thought maybe there was a glitch in the matrix or something. Uh, but anyway... Uh, we're going to continue on with what we should have been doing before I had my little issues that took me a little longer to figure out than I should have. So right now I'm connected to the uh, ADSM. I'm looking at the firewall rules. So same thing as before uh, with the transparent mode. We have security levels associated with our um, device interfaces and based on those security levels we let some traffic in and some traffic out. So if we go look at the interfaces. We have security level 100 on the inside, security level 0 on the outside. So in theory, everything from the outside should be from the inside should be allowed out and nothing from the outside should be allowed in based on these rules we have. So we're going to test that and we're going to try to get out to our CNT web server and the last time I tried to test this, when I tried this, it worked, but it showed me the cache version. I was like, oh, cool, everything's work, working and great. So then I spent some time trying to figure out why it wasn't working later on. Something else I was trying wasn't working. So I was like, oh, I'm so stupid. So I finally figured out that, hey, guess what? I don't have my default gateway set on my a ASA. So I did, if you remember, when I ran through the wizard, I, uh, after I finished the wizard, I added the inbound route we needed. But for some reason, I thought the wizard asked me for that. So I went through and ran the wizard again. Because you can do that. You can run the wizard again and just see what it does. And nowhere in here did it ask me for a default gateway. Which is about the dumbest thing I could think of having a wizard do. Like, shouldn't your wizard ask you if you need a default gateway? It never asked me if I needed a gateway. Which is dumb. So anyway, I forgot to do a gateway. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cancel, exit. We're going to go ahead and add a gateway. So we'll do that under device setup, routing, static routes. We need to add. We want it to go to the outside interface. Uh, and pretty much our, it's going to be our, our, our all zeros route. Right? Um, okay. All right. The Kway IP, that's what I wanted. 10.1.1.253. No, 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 no. That's not right. 99.99.99.1 is what the gateway should be for that for that interface. And it says pretty much anything 99.99.99.1. So we apply that, hit OK. Remember, don't forget you have to apply everything or it doesn't get applied. And now if we do show run, it's weird. We have a static route for anything going to 99.99.99.1. I don't know why it's not showing up there. Maybe I needed to add it in a different way to get it to show up there. So hopefully, now if we go test,
It's still not working. So let's go look at that route that got added. It says tunneled. I don't know why it says tunneled. Let's go look at what I uh, look at my route. Tunneled. I don't know. I don't remember clicking on tunneled. But you might do that too. So good thing. Good thing we're watching so carefully. Now let's try it again. Did I apply? Yeah, I applied. If it's grayed out, it means there's nothing to apply. Hey, check it out. So, uh, yeah, so don't forget to set your default gateway. I've heard that can be considered an automatic zero in some situations. So, yeah, so we're good now to get out. Um, now maybe I can reconnect to my other testing workstation. Hey, check that out. That's so awesome. All right, so now I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm in, on the outside on my testing workstation, and I try to get to the inside, and that's not working. So now we can move along with our, our required configurations. A couple things we need to do to make that work. This is, this is the part where we're letting traffic from the outside get to the inside. Uh, one thing we need to do is we need to add a static NAT. So we're going to do that under firewall, NAT rules. We'll hit add. So uh, if you remember the way we added the NAT on the router, we said, oh, hey, here's a static NAT. Anything from... 10.1.1.130, we need to change that to be the public IP, which in our case is 99.99.99.5, in my case. So we're doing the same thing here on the ASA. So we have source interfaces inside, source address. We're going to create a network object. We're going to call it web server private, because it's the private IP of the web server. It's going to be a host, and it's going to be 10.1.1.130. And we're going to add a network object for the web server public, pu public, public, and that's going to be 99.99.99.5. Uh, so I just created those two objects. I didn't need to create them both yet, but I'm going to assign the web server private to this, this box for the original source. And then we're going to want to put the web server public for the translated source. And destination interface is going to be outside. So anything coming from the inside to the outside, we want to, if it's from the web server private, we want to give it the web server public address. And we're going to enable rule, and we're going to do both, both directions. So that'll allow inbound and outbound traffic to work as expected. So we'll apply that. And now we need to add some firewall rules access rules. So access rules can be kind of tricky sometimes when you have NAT involved because you don't know if the firewall is going to do the NAT first or the not NAT first or the sorry that was dumb. We're going to do the NAT first or going to do the access rules first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a any any rule just to see if it works. So we're going to let any source any destination I'm filtering right now to find the things more easily I click on HTTP, TCP, I'm going to hit, hit the add. I'm also going to do HTTPS, filter, add it. And I need a DNS, filter. Oh, there's no DNS. Yeah, remember, it's called domain. I don't know why they didn't call it DNS. Maybe back in the olden days, nobody called it DNS. Maybe called it domain. Yeah, I don't know. So basically those are the things we need to add. So right now we're going to go from any source to any destination. So this is going to let any traffic of those types in. So in theory, that's been applied. So if we go over to our outside testing workstation, we'll try by IP first. Hey, check that out. That let me get by IP. DNS may or may not work yet because we have that uh, bad DNS cache thing. This, this will work once my server restarts. We'll... We'll, uh, we'll test that at the end to make sure DNS works. But we don't want to let anything in. We want to filter based on based on the destination IP address that it's going to for, for some traffic. So we're going to edit this, and we're going to... First, we're going to put the web server public, because in my mind, that makes the most sense that you're going to filter based on the public IP address that it's coming to. 
So we're going to apply that and now we'll go back to the test workstation and see if it works. So that looks like it's not going to work. So we'll go over and we will change this from public to private. So we change from public to private. And now we'll go over to the test workstation. Let's try that again. Oh, hey, it worked this time. So what that tells me is that the ASA is doing the, the translation for the NAT before it's checking the access rules. So if we're, if we're writing any rules for inbound traffic, we need to use the private IP of the, of the uh, web server in those rules for that to work. So again, on your inbound rule, the NAT is happening before the access rules are being checked. So we need to filter for that. So uh, that gets us working in the inbound direction. Like I said, I, eventually DNS should start working once my server restarts. Oh, yeah, once my server restarts, DNS should start working. We'll, we'll test that at the end. We also want to uh, filter the traffic we're going to allow out of our network. So we're going we're gonna to add a role on the inside interface, any source, any destination, and the same thing. We want to allow those few required, few required services that we, we need out. So we're going to add HTTP, HTTPS. We're going to add DNS. So these are, the, these are the rules we need to add in the lab to get that to work. I'm also going to create another rule that you don't need to create, but I'm creating it so that my remote desktop traffic will work. So remote desktop uses port 3389, and I don't know if there's a predefined thing for that. So I'm going to create a new a new group TCP service group we'll call it RDP for remote desktop what? that's not what I wanted I want to create a new service add service object is that what I did? oh yeah I did the wrong thing destination port any no, destination ports can be 3389. Source port can be anything, so I'm not going to specify that. So hopefully this is going to not kill my uh, remote desktop session when we add these rules. So let's see if this is going to work. It looks like my remote desktop session is still working, so that rule worked, and we'll test getting out to the internet, the rich net, and that seems to be working as well. That's not the right name I wanted. I can't get to the outside by inside server by outside name. All right, so. That is mostly everything working. Uh, my DNS is still not working from the outside, but I'm hoping that's a caching issue.